Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and the Dresden plate is a very unusual block, as in the fact that it's not square, it's not rectangular, it's pie shape. So when it's put together, it's not making something square, it's making something circular or curvy. And when this is put together as one big Dresden plate, it makes an awesome table topper. Making a Dresden plate out of a kit is definitely a fun way to start. The coordinating fabrics are already chosen for us. They're already cut for us, so we don't have to worry about any scrap fabric. And this kit is from a company called Sit and Sew. So we have the entire quilt front, but we also get the backing. And the pattern comes with the kit. So this kit from Sit and Sew is completely 100% cut out for us. So we don't need a mat, a ruler, or a cutter. We can just sit down and start sewing. This is a great way to try something new. It's also a lot of fun if we're just wanting to sit and have some fun for traveling, for beginners, even for us that sometimes when we just don't want to cut out the fabric. This is definitely going to make it go together really quick. I have a unique way of quilting this once the top is all done and we're going to cover that today in the video. So we have all of these beautiful fans pre-cut out for us and those tops have the little curve on them. The pattern does give the directions on how to sew it together but there are no cutting directions because well it's already cut for us. These are big 16 inch wedges so we're going to end up with a 40 inch circle, which is going to be perfect for a table topper. I do like the way the fabrics already go together, so I'm going to leave them in the order that the kit has come in. We can sew these right at the sewing machine without rearranging the stacks. But what we need to do is have the small piece up in front of us. So this round piece is facing us. Take the top piece and flip it over take those two pieces, they will be right sides together, and stitch from that small edge coming right down to that larger edge. When we open it up, it's going to be in the correct order. If we stitch with that large piece going under the machine first, when we sew those two pieces together, those pieces are going to be reversed. So it's important that we start sewing with the small piece up at the top. And that's if all of these fabrics are already facing up. The stack is in front of me with that small side up at the top. I've matched up my first two. I can just pick that up and start sewing. I'm going to leave those first two in the machine, flip that top one over, match up those two edges, so I have those two layers right side together. I've stitched a little bit off. Now I'm going to stitch right onto the next one and continue sewing that quarter inch. So right off of that fabric, now we can pick up the next two. Top one gets flipped over. I'm stitching from that small end coming to the large and I'm stitching on that right hand side. As I cut these apart, I'm going to open them, but I'm going to keep them in order. So each one is going to get snipped, placed on top. And that last one means I'm right back up at the top. I'm going to continue the sewing the same way. The difference now is I just have two units. I'll take those first two, flip them over, match up those two raw edges and stitch down and continue sewing those two units together to equal four. Snip those threads in between the layers, open them up. You now have big four blocks. Stack them together right sides up. You can see how quick it is to sew them together this way. Same thing, take that top piece, flip so we can match up those edges and stitch down. Open up those two big units. We now have the two halves done. Match up those right edges, 
So one row stitching along the one edge and one row stitching along the other edge. That entire top is now done. Because the fabric came already flat and pressed, already precision cut, I didn't have to do any work. Just open up that package and start sewing. No cutting, no pressing, no measuring. Now I'm going to be able to press this. None of these seams are going to match to any other seams. So we can press them any way we want. We can press them going all in one direction, all in the other, or press those seams open and flat. It is important that this is laying flat. If it's not, we can adjust that through one seam. Either open it up a little bit or stitch it in a little bit. But as long as all of your seams were a quarter inch, it's going to be flat. There are a few ways we can finish this. We do need to have a center. The center does come with the kit. We can put a fusible web on this and fuse that on and do a little row of top stitch. You can also turn this edge all the way around or we can put this piece on after. So we're going to put this on after the batting has been added. We need to secure these raw edges and we're going to stitch all the way around using a quarter inch seam allowance. Once that row of stitching has been done, press that row flat. From here, we're going to get those quilt layers ready. For this project, I'm going to use the Hobbs heirloom batting that is fusible. This is going to save me a lot of work. The backing fabric is pressed and ready to go. And I have my batting. I need to fuse these two layers together. Because this is fusible on both sides, I'm just going to use a piece of parchment paper and cover my iron with it. And that way I can press and the glue is not going to go onto my pressing surface. And then following the directions, we are just going to be able to iron these layers together. The batting and the back fabric are fused together. Normally, we would take this quilt top and baste it on the top. We can still do that if you want to put a hand binding on. But I want to turn this right side out. So I'm going to put the quilt top onto the backing fabric. I'm going to leave that batting on and just turn this upside down. So I have the good side of the back and my batting. Place that quilt right side down and smooth it nice and flat. We need to make sure that the entire surface does have that backing and batting on it. We have right sides touching. This technique will work with a batting that you can stitch on top of. So we're going to have those layers together. Now I need to pin all the way around. And I do want to have a lot of pins because I will be stitching all the way around with the machine. So I do not want any of this to shift. Make sure that center lays flat. Smooth out all of your arms and pin. Once this is pinned down, I'm going to trim off a little bit of this backing. So I just want to go around. This will just give me less under the arm of my sewing machine. Now we can stitch all the way around following the edge of the quilt top. You will be stitching around curves. So if you have your machine set at smaller stitches, it's easier to turn the corners. If you'd like, you can always use a walking foot. We have a smooth stitch now all the way around those curves. Now we can trim this off. Just follow the quilt top and trim. So I have a quarter inch seam trimmed all the way around. The batting is on the back and I have both of those right sides together. This quilt should be still laying nice and flat. And we do have a big hole that we're going to turn it right side out. So gently just take this quilt and have it come out through that big center hole. And being careful, we can turn this all right side out. You can put your hand between those layers and just smooth out 
that edge and do that all the way around. Because this is a fusible batting, I'm going to be able to fuse this top right onto this batting. At the iron, I'm going to make sure these curves are all nice and I'm going to press going down into the center. Once all those layers are pressed together, we're going to be able to put the center piece. I'm going to turn this into a big applique piece. I have lots of fabric of the background fabric, but I did find in my stash a nice big flower that I'd like to cut out. So I want to center that flower on this shape. Fold it in half, fold it in half again, find my center point. Now I can open it up and pin these layers together. Once this piece is pinned on, I'm going to stitch around the outside just like the table topper so I can trim off some of that extra. To turn this right side out, we need a hole. So put your hand between those layers and whatever fabric's going to be underneath that you're not going to see, we can just cut a little hole. So I have both right sides together, finish pinning and stitch all the way around using that nice little stitch to get those curves smooth. Once that stitching's been done, I can trim and turn this right side out and press it. If the hole's not big enough, you can make it bigger. Once it's been turned and pressed, it's ready to go in the center of the quilt. And this is a fusible batting, so I'm going to use it to my advantage. Place it where I want and then fuse those layers together. The center is fused on, but we will have to stitch these edges down. Now this quilt is ready to be quilted. There will be no binding needed, so we can just sit down and quilt it however we'd like. But we will need to do one row of stitching to stitch this center on. You can hand stitch it or machine stitch it. To finish this off, I did hand stitch this center down and did a lot of straight line quilting. I started with these big curves, went in and did second curves and some scallops along the edges and did a little simple unit for the center. I used a dusty rose thread on both the bobbin and on the top. So some of the thread work you can see and other times it just blends right in. This could be quilted in many different ways. We can quilt down each arm, applique the center and do a floral in the center, have feathers coming out or have feathers going all the way around. However you quilt it, it's going to be a beautiful showpiece. Sit and Sew Company has a lot of different variations on this Dresden plate. And all of those fabrics are handpicked and put together so there's different variations. And starting with a pre-cut kit saves us time and saves us having to buy all those different fabrics that we need to put together to make one really big Dresden plate. This entire piece I was able to get done in an afternoon because all of that pre-cutting was done for me. I'll put a link in the description to sit and sew and to this particular pattern. And as always, thank you for joining me today on Sew Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe. And as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.